welcome to South Asia Today, a show that provides you the glimpses of South Asia. I'm your host, Shivangi Mishra. Let's begin with the headlines first. Construction of Buddhist Cultural Center begins in Nepal. Baramra district of Kashmir to get its first physical medicine, rehabilitation center and gymnasium. And massive protests sweep through POK demand freedom and rights. Let's begin the show with Nepal, where the construction of the International Center for Buddhist Cultural Heritage has formally begun with Bhumi Pujan in Nepal's Lumbani. The event was attended by monks from different Buddhist nations. Earlier, in the year 2022, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, during his visit to Lumbani along with former Nepali Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba, laid the foundation stone for the construction of the Buddhist Centre. Have a look. In a bid to strengthen cultural ties between India and Nepal, Recently, construction of the India International Centre for Buddhist Culture and Heritage has formally begun in Lumbini of Nepal with the Bhumi Puja. The Bhumi Puja event saw the participation of 250 distinguished guests, including 150 monks and 100 devotees. Dr. Dhammapiya, Secretary General of the International Buddhist Confederation and other monks participated in the Bhumi Puja. The program started with serene chanting by various sects followed by the sacred Bhumi Pujan ceremony. We are very happy today that the India International Center of Buddhist Culture and Heritage at Lumbini, Nepal is finally going to start for construction today. As we all know, the spiritual cultural bond between India and Nepal goes back to 2,600 years ago. So this is a life and main focus is the friendship, harmony, coexistence between the people of Nepal and India that we have to maintain and promote and strengthen. That's what our main focus. We are very grateful to the government of Nepal and the people of Nepal, the Buddhists of Nepal, for giving us the opportunity to set up India International Center of Buddhist Culture and Heritage. Now, the formal process to start the construction of the state-of-the-art building with zero carbon emissions began. The establishment of the India International Center for Buddhist Culture and Heritage symbolizes the shared cultural heritage between India and Nepal while emphasizing ecological mindfulness and interconnectedness with the living world. It aims to provide the teachings of Lord Buddha and enrich the spiritual journey of pilgrims worldwide. The center's vision received overwhelming support, establishing it as a crucial hub for dharma-related activities in the Lumbini monastic zone. Uh, India International Center uh, for Buddhist Culture and Heritage, when I Nambani, Sometimes you both the Dharma Kose, Saskitiko Sangerson, Sombardan, the Parvadama, Ile or Apose Dunga at Kopulko, Tamgarnes of Anamele Bishop Lekosu. The International Buddhist Confederation, New Delhi, is supervising construction on the property allotted by the Lumbini Development Trust under an agreement signed in March 2022. Today, the actual start of construction of India International Center for Buddhist Heritage. Here in the sacred birthplace of the Buddha within the Lumbini Master Plan Zone. It takes us back to those era. I very strongly remember as part of my service as a Vice Chairman 
when I tried to look back into the documents in the early countries that had voted, that had supported the Lumbini should be developed as an international peace center, as a global Buddhist village. Among the pile of documents, I found one very early letter written by an envoy from Indian government, strongly commending Uthant for proposing the creation of Lumbini as an international peace center. Almost seven decades later, today, here we are, and on this very land, a beautiful sight. As a symbolic lotus of the Buddha's teaching is going to be born here. Earlier, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, during his 2022 visit to Lumbini, along with former Nepali Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba, laid the foundation stone for the construction of the Buddhist center. The project's award of contract has been handed by the International Buddhist Confederation to ACC, Gorkha and Indo-Nepal Joint Venture Business. At the time of the center's construction, an estimated 1 billion Indian rupees will be spent in the near future. Moving on. The Baramula district in the north of Kashmir get the first of its kind state-of-the-art physical medicine and rehabilitation center and gymnasium in the government medical college. The initiative of Jammu and Kashmir administration is being lauded by the locals as they will now have access to modern medical facilities and services available at a very short distance. Take a look. The Jammu and Kashmir administration recently established state-of-the-art physical medicine and rehabilitation centre and gymnasium at Government Medical College Paramula in North Kashmir. This is the first such type of centre in North Kashmir. The centre is catering to the specific needs of post-trauma, post-stroke, orthopedic and congenital ortho patients with a focus on their rehabilitation and recovery. हम यहां से सूरा मेडिकल जाते थे श्रीनगर दूर मगर अब बहुत हमें इधर फैसिलिटी बहुत अच्छी तरह से हमें इलाज उलाज मिलता है इसलिए हम बहुत शुक्रगुजार हैं इस जीएमसी बारामूला मेरे बाजू में दर्द था मैं जाता था श्रीनगर इलाज करने के लिए मुझे किराया लगता था बहुत पैसे लगता था जब से ये बारामूला में शुरू हो गया जहां फिजियोथेरेपी का सेक्शन तब से मेरा मेरे मेरा मेरी बाजू में फर्क भी आ गया है और फिर तो मेरी किराया भी बच गया है मैं गुजारिश करता हूं लोगों से सुप्रिंटेंडेंट मैम का शुक्रिया करता हूं डिस्ट्रिक्ट एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन से शुक्रिया करता हूं जब से उन्होंने ये सेटअप लिया तो वहां मेरी फर्क होगी मैं गुजारिश करता हूं लोगों से कि आए अपना इलाज करें बारामूला डिस्ट्रिक्ट हॉस्पिटल में यहां पर फैसिलिटी सब अवेलेबल है The center is equipped with advanced medical machineries and offers specialized care to facilitate the healing process and enhance the quality of life for patients. Around 10 machines worth crores of rupees have been purchased by the hospital authorities to provide latest medical facilities to the patients. ये नॉर्दर्न कश्मीर में पहला ऐसा सेंटर है जिसमें हम पोस्ट स्ट्रोक रिहैबिलिटेशन या जो घुटनों का दर्द हो या मान लीजिए वो पेशेंट्स जिनके लिए फिजियोथेरेपी की जरूरत है उन पेशेंट्स को हम न्यूअर टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ फिजियोथेरेपी दे सकेंगे और जो हमारी मशीनें यहां हैं हम बहुत शुक्रगुजार हैं हमारे एलजी एलजी साहब के हमारे कमिश्नर सेक्रेटरी साहब के और डिस्ट्रिक्ट एडमिशन के के कि जिन्होंने ये चीजें हमें प्रोवाइड की और इस वक्त हम इस काबिल हैं कि हम अपने पेशेंट्स को यहां अच्छी तरह से जो एट पार विद दिल्ली हम उनको ट्रीटमेंट दे सकते हैं
Rehabilitation Center and Gymnasium at Government Medical College, Baramula will not only cater patients from Baramula district but from other districts of North Kashmir also. The Government Medical College, Baramula is emerging as a key healthcare institution across North Kashmir. Other medical facilities such as dialysis has also been introduced at the centre to help patients in the district. The locals lauded the efforts of the administration and were seen satisfied with the medical services provided at the hospital. Now, we take a look at some happenings in Asia in a segment called Asia Watch. Iraqi street artists struggling with a continuous heat wave have flipped their schedules and switched their materials to adapt to the high temperatures. Direct sunlight, humidity and temperatures that reach up to 53 degrees Celsius dries up the paint faster in addition to causing physical and psychological fatigue, it also blocks the creative process. Instead of working during the daytime, street artists started working at night using higher quality materials and a large light to illuminate their canvases. Iraq is the fifth most vulnerable country in the world to the climate crisis, according to the United Nations. Drought and extreme temperatures make large parts of Iraq barely habitable during the summer months. South Korea issued its highest alert as heavy rain from Typhoon Kanun pounded the country's southern regions, forcing authorities to cancel all flights at Jeju International Airport this week. The storm also prompted the closure of dozens of sea routes and roads, the Interior Ministry said. Kanun could make landfall at the southeastern South Korean port city of Tongyong on Thursday before tracking up the Korean peninsula, authorities said. On Tuesday, officials evacuated more than 30,000 scouts from their campsite in the southwest ahead of the typhoon, the latest snack to hit the World Scout Jamburi. The storm is currently in the sea south of Kyushu, Japan's southwestern main island some 860 kilometers from Tokyo, after wreaking havoc in the southwestern Okinawa region. The Lebanese army took journalists on a tour along Lebanon's disputed southern border with Israel as regional tensions rise. Israel threatened on Tuesday to return Lebanon to the Stone Age in any war against Hezbollah following weeks of friction with the armed Iranian-backed group along the country's disputed border. Recent months have seen face-offs between Lebanese civilians, at least one group of Hezbollah operatives and Israeli troops across the fortified frontier. Massive protests have swept through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir as people have taken to streets to demand what they say was always theirs. They chanted slogans for freedom and demanded rights to be accorded to them at par with people in the other region. A Kashmiri activist, Amjad Ayub Mirza, highlighted the grave injustices done to the people of POK for decades and accused Pakistan for depriving locals of POK of their rights and basic needs. We have a report. Massive protests have swept through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir as people have taken to streets to demand what they say was always theirs. They chanted slogans for freedom and demanded rights to be accorded to them at par with people in the other regions. Many 
یا ان کو اس میں سب سڑی دو لیکن دوستوں ساتھیوں اور بزرگوں ہماری بدقسمتی یہ ہے کہ جس ریاست کے اندر ہم رہ رہے ہیں وہ ریاست ہی نہیں ہے وہ ایک متنازع خطہ ہے While a strong voice for freedom from Pakistani clutches has been at the forefront of nearly all protests in POK of late, people have also highlighted the grave state-inflicted injustices they have endured for decades. Pakistan government has been arbitrarily discriminatory towards the people of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. People say they are made to even pay taxes for those resources and services that they never used. This is not the first time that the people of Pakistani occupied Jammu Kashmir have observed statewide protests. In every single city, they have come out to protest against load shedding, cuts in wheat subsidies, uh, as well as added taxes on electricity bills. They are charging us fuel tax. We don't use fuel to generate uh, electricity. We use hydropower, water. So this is basically, they, have, they are shifting the burden of Punjab to uh, POJK. The miseries don't end here. The government has turned a blind eye to the widespread issues of food shortage, poor health infrastructure and a crumbling education system. Some even accuse the government of deliberately depriving people of POK with the fundamental facilities for they never want to see them succeed and compete and beat people of Pakistan. Activists have time and time again sought Indian intervention into the issue. They say it is an Indian territory that Pakistan has occupied. People are desperate, there is no food, there is no clean drinking water, there is uh, no... Uh, you know, proper infrastructure like roads or hospitals or schools and colleges or universities. People are fed up and people are now uh, raising slogans against Pakistan as well as against the sitting government in so-called Azad Kashmir. It's high time now that the government of India addresses the issues of nearly 4.5 million Indian subjects living under the occupation of Pakistan. As the Indian Independence Day draws near, it is highly likely that these protests will gather further stream. People have long been yearning freedom from Pakistan, looking to change lanes and join the Indian route. For now, the situation might be heating up as emotions come to a boil. From the intricate details of a sari to the bold patterns of a rug, each handloom textile is a work of art that tells a story. A story that traces its roots back to the era of the freedom movement for Swadeshi textiles. Today in our show, we'll provide you with a glimpse of the nostalgic cultural legacy of India's handloom art form, which celebrated its ninth edition of National Handloom Day recently featuring a variety of fashion events and exhibitions that left the spectators in awe. Let's have a look. The manual weaving of intricate embroidery on the fabric surface, characterized by fine needlework using colourful threads, has a significant history dating back to the Swadeshi movement in 1906. The journey of exotic handloom textiles began during the British era by Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Bipin Chandrapal and Lala Lajpat Rai from West Bengal's Calcutta. Today, the vibrant traditional handloom textile holds a special pride on the world stage for its potential to dominate the global market with its eccentric and unique design patterns. On the occasion of the 9th edition of National Handloom Day, which is observed on the 7th of August every year, many states hosted handloom exhibitions and fashion shows across the country with the support of the administration and local NGOs. इतना ताकतवर था 
उसे आजादी के बाद फिर से सशक्त करने पर उतना जोर नहीं दिया गया हालत तो ये थी कि खादी को भी मरणासन्न स्थिति में छोड़ दिया गया था लोग खादी पहनने वालों को हीन भावना से देखने लगे थे 2014 के बाद से हमारी सरकार इस स्थिति और इस सोच को बदलने में जुटी है The exhibition was a government effort aimed at revitalizing the dying traditional craftsmanship and encouraging the weaving community. It provided them with a platform to showcase their unique creations to the world. Over time, the manufacturing and production capacity of the handloom industry have improved significantly, leading to a large number of artisans engaging in craftsmanship across different corners of the country. Today more than 35 lakh artisans of which 25 lakhs are females are supported by the handloom industry these artisans weave to produce high quality and sustainable fabrics yahan pe iski history dekhenge to ye hua tha jab 19 1905 1905 में जब हमारे देश में एक राष्ट्र वो चले थे कि जो कि एक खादी को बढ़ावा मिलना चाहिए जो कि गांधी जी का था कि चरखा से चलना चाहिए हर एक चीज़ जो कि हमारा पहनावा हम जो कि वेस्टर्न कल्चर पे डिपेंड थे तो उनका ये मानना था कि हम अपना इस जो हैंडलूम और जो हैंडीक्राफ्ट हैं इतने आर्टिजन और जो वीवर्स हैं इनको बढ़ावा मिल जाए तो उनको बढ़ावा कैसे मिले उनको एक प्लेटफॉर्म चाहिए तो जो आज सात अगस्त है ये जो नेशनल हैंडलूम डे है यहाँ पे आज दो तो एग्जिबिशन लगी एक हैंडलूम के ऊपर थी एग्जिबिशन एक हैंडीक्राफ्ट के प्रोडक्ट के ऊपर थी और उसके ऊपर एक क्या था फैशन शो ऑर्गेनाइज किया गया था फैशन शो का मोटिव ये था कि जो आज की डेट में जो पहनावा आ जाए तो उसको हम उनके साथ कम्पीट कर सकें कम्पीट कैसे फ्यूजन कर कुछ नया डाल के तो वो बीवर को हम प्रमोट कर सकें ताकि उनको एक प्लेटफॉर्म दे सके ताकि वो बीवर आगे जाए अगर जो प्रोडक्ट हम बेच रहे हैं या कोई हैंडीक्राफ्ट या हैंडलूम का उसमें अगर ऑथेंटिसिटी हो तभी तो वो ग्लोबल मार्केट में कम्पीट करेगा तो हम चाहते जो हिम क्राफ्ट एक ब्रांड है हम इसको एक ब्रांड के लिए नाम से जाने जाए ताकि पूरे वर्ल्ड में The vibrant and exotic festivity of handloom became a celebration of India's rich legacy of handwoven textiles and the indomitable spirit of the traditional weaving community. They have been instrumental in preserving India's age-old heritage while also contributing to socio-economic progress. During the exhibition, the artisans showcased a variety of indigenous handwoven and handicraft products. simultaneously raising awareness among visitors about the historical and cultural significance of their creations the visitors would stop by each stall to admire and praise their creativity यहाँ पे आपको सर देखने को मिलेगा जैसे यहाँ सामने आप देख सकते हो हिम कॉस्ट का वो जो ऑर्गेनिक चीज़ें हैं जैसे चाय पत्ती हो गई हैंडलूम हैंडीक्राफ्ट के जो भी शॉल बनते हैं स्काफ बनते हैं मफलर बनते हैं टोकरियाँ हो गई और हमारे स्टोर में स्पेशली आपको देखने को मिलेगा चंबा रुमाल और मेटल आर्ट जो कि मंडी का फेमस है As a part of the handloom exhibition, a fashion show was also organized in Shimla to attract people, particularly the youth, towards choosing Swadeshi indigenous clothing while also expressing support for local artisans. The public display of traditional and fusion clothes during the festivity of fashion showcased unconventional patterns and designs worn by models representing various regions of Himachal Pradesh. इसमें टोटल 35 मॉडल्स हैं और सब हम तीन राउंड्स में कर रहे हैं हम अपने ट्रेडिशनल कॉस्ट्यूम्स प्लस फ्यूजन कॉस्ट्यूम्स और फिनाले राउंड और सभी मॉडल्स जैसे हम कुछ सेवन ए डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स का चंबा किन्नौर लाहौल स्पिति मंडी इनका हम ट्रेडिशनल कॉस्ट्यूम्स डिस्प्ले कर रहे हैं फिर फ्यूजन राउंड में हमने इनको हमारे इनोवेटिव वे में राउंड्स को थोड़ा हिमाचली टच दे और उनको रिप्रजेंट करने की कोशिश की है जो आजकल की जनरेशन को बहुत पसंद 
जाएगा The intricate craftsmanship displayed by India's handloom artisans offers just a glimpse into the vast vibrant cultural heritage of the country. Events like these are essential to bring attention to the importance of these traditional art forms. They also provide a platform for artisans to share their work with the world and receive fair compensation for their skills. So next time you come across any such exhibition remember to take a moment to appreciate and admire their incredible creations It's time for me to wrap up today's episode we'll be back next week at the same time This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of South Asia today Goodbye and take care